Okay, what's going on guys? So, this might be exclusively on my blog, only because I really haven't been making videos about um, Marsha Muller or blog posts as well. But, um, I don't know, I just kind of feel like it would be better suited there. But, what I'm going to be reading toward the end of this year, which today is the 29th, so we got three days, and it's going to take me exactly that, really, probably less to read these, to read the next two books, is I'm going to finish up reading uh, keeping myself updated with the Marsha Muller Sharon McCone series. Now you see all of these books. The majority of these books I got in a lot sale. As an actual lot sale on eBay earlier this year back in March. And um, the reason that I bought this sale is because I, that, I decided that after Sue Grafton died a year ago on the 27th of December. I decided that I wanted to go back and read much the early private female private eye you know um fundamental writers of that particular subgenre uh which is uh Marsha Muller now technically there was one before her which was Maxine O'Callaghan which I'll talk about next year but um I wanted to work my way backwards and Marsha Muller debuted her female private eye Sharon McCone in 1977 with the release of Edwin of the Iron Shoes I found this card back edition earlier this year and um I love it <laughs> it's a nice 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 edition but I read Edwin of the Iron Shoes so late in the game. I read it back in 2016, I, I want to say, that which is so pitiful of me because I love this genre. But um, I ended up buying this copy, but I read it on my Kindle. Then I read the second book on a Kindle. And then I bound this at a used bookstore, which is the third book. And I read this... Um, maybe a couple of months a couple of months prior. But um, what I decided to do is I said, you know what? Sue Grafton's gone, so I need to find, I need to get into it with her peers, the people who write in the same genre as her, the female private eye, and of course, Marsha Muller is up there. So I ordered all these books, many of them I got from eBay, many of them from lot sales, and I read all of these books, with the exception of maybe one I didn't read, two of them I DNF'd, no, three I DNF'd, I'll get into that in a minute here, but I read all the books up to book 31 someone always knows so what's left is book number 32 which is um 2017's release of the color of fear and 2018's release of the breakers which came out in august so these are the two books that i'm going to finish the year reading and um i'll be all caught up with with marsha muller and sharon mccomb so going backwards um what really sold me and put me on a journey of reading these books is reading this. I was at work one night and um, I sat there all night and read this book. And it was so good. Games to Keep Away the Dark. It's the fourth book in the series. What made me say, oh my God, I got to read the rest of these books was the villain in this book. Um, I was actually about to give it away, but the villain. The villain in this book is what made me say, I have got to read the next book. And um, that's when I went ahead and read Leave a Message for Willie, which is book number five in the series. I hope I'm in the right order. And this one is about a um, Sharon McCone investigating a, the theme is the flea market and swap meet. I love this book. The ending was so good. It was unbelievable, but it was really good. And then I read, oh, I can't put this in here. I read Double, which is book number six in a series. And this is the one Marsha Muller co-wrote with her husband, Bill Pron Was it Pronzini? Um, now, what they do is Bill Pronzini is an author himself. He has his own detective called the Nameless Detective or something. But they go from chapter to chapter. Like, Wolf is his detective, dubbed Wolf by Sharon McCone. And then... As you can see, Sharon McCone has her chapters. but So they go back and forth solving this case involving an old friend of Sharon McCone who fell out of a hotel room. Anyway, I read this book in one night. But the catch is that I skipped all of Wolf's chapters and only read the chapters featuring Sharon McCone's voice. I couldn't help it. Um, but it was so good. And then I read um, There's Nothing to Be Afraid Of. And then I just read them all. I just went on down the line. It's like I read one and I picked up the next. Um, and they were all good. The series is so good. It is so good. Like, I love it. But, I mean, you know, I got to keep it honest. It is so good. 
but then it stopped it started to nose dive after this one, Wolf in the Shadows. I think this was the last really good Sharon McCall mystery. And then I got to the butcher cuts her down, cuts him down, and that's when I started to um I DNF'd it this one. It just it just the disconnect started to get there. And this is when the series went from just kind of her being Sharon McCall being like a oh, but my absolute favorite in the series is this one, Where It Goes Live. This is my favorite. <laughs> I should go ahead and mention that. But, um, so going back to my point, it's between sort of after when the butcher cuts her down. That's when, this was when the series, Sharon McCone started to develop a relationship with a, a pilot named High Rapinski, who works for a security firm and he's all secretive and stuff. And this is kind of, to me, where the series just started to get to this inflated direction of being more of like some espionage spy kind of books not but not really i think it had a lot more to do with sharon mccone jumping this out of this her little plane her cessna plane and flying around and the energy just wrapped ramped up i liked them more in the earlier novels when they were about sharon mccone literally gumshoe uh beating the bushes back stomping the pavement trying to solve the crimes you know they were so slow burning and procedural in that aspect but then this is when all the action started to ramp up so i did manage to read a wild one the only book out of all these books the only book that i skipped completely and had zero interest in the storyline was the broken promised land because this is when sharon raccoon is trying to uh help her brother-in-law who is a musical artist who's having give, receiving these death threats or something? I don't know. It's something about the music industry, industry or something. It just did not. I just didn't want to read it. But um, they the series coasted along really nicely, and I will say that maybe around Dead Midnight, in Dangerous Hour, and Vanishing Point, these three these three were much more aligned with the earlier novels. Although what made me even more frustrated with this series is the fact that Marsha Muller kept adding different characters to the series and I hate every single one. Sharon McCone's uh, nephew comes along to be her like technology person. She works with a, a ex-cop. I hated them all and it got more frustrating the more that the series grew and Sharon McCone grew and she started to have her own investigative firm hiring these different peoples. I miss it when in the earlier books when she was just like this slow I guess you can say low-waged investigator who's doing the work of the upper um, management or team within the office that she worked in. But, I mean, it's good that she got all grown up and stuff, but at the same time, it was like, it wasn't as fun. But, um, these three was probably the last. I love these, this one, too, Listen to the Silence. This was so personal as it involved the truth behind her her heritage and her birth. And we learned that Sharon McCone, which we once thought was half Native American, is actually... Uh, full Native American, but these three was really nicely. I love these three, and this is where I DNF'd it again. This is the next DNF. It just kept going on and on. The Ever Running Man is about bombs. Think about it. Lots of speed, lots of racing, and it just kept going on and on, and I was so bored. And then I thought that I was going to be really moved by burnout, which is where Sharon McCone takes a break after the events in the previous book, and she goes like to a little retreat almost to you know to settle down and get herself back together but it was really not that great and then locked in took place this is where she was shot in the head and she was actually locked inside of her body so the chapters kind of interchange with Sharon McCombs perspective inside of her body and then those of her team who are trying to find out what happened to her who committed the crime um I can say that I finished and read this entire book and it was actually okay. It was interesting because of the fact that Sharon McCone was locked inside of her body. So it wasn't too bad. But then coming back came where Marsha Muller did the same thing where she had Sharon McCone's perspective and then that of all of her other teammates, her other employees, and I hated it. Hated it. City of Whispers was okay. Um, she toned down a lot of the chapters featuring different perspectives and it was mainly that of Sharon McCone and her nephew. I skipped the nephew parts. I, I don't have any interest in them. And in just for just a moment, for just a slight moment, Looking for Yesterday came out 
I read looking for yesterday and it it was just it was the latest closest one to the earlier novels where it was just beating the pavement traditional gumshoe the night searchers was awful terrible all around and then someone always knows lost interest and ended up dnf in it so needless to say this series is kind of done it is it's done but i I had already pre-bought book number 32 and 33 and I was like, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and finish reading this series because I read all these books and the later part, starting the later part of March all the way up to May, the end of May. And then that's when I stopped when I couldn't, ha I couldn't take enough of it. But um, Sharon McCone, I'm going to end the year reading the last two Sharon McCone books that's currently out and um. You know, I just feel good doing it now. Hopefully, I'll actually get through them. So, that's all I want to share. And that's pretty much it. Wish me luck. Let's go make a cup of coffee and get to reading. <laughs>